Okay, welcome everyone to our October meeting. It still is just October. It's great. And we've got our guest Emma Mortimer is here today from Fresh Shorts. Um, let's just do a quick run round of um, name and where you're from. And uh, if it was hard for you to get here tonight, if, uh, if you had anything, any challenges um, getting on getting on tonight. So um, yeah, I'm Maddie, the Southern Filmmakers Collective coordinator, uh, officially now, as in the un unofficial um, up until up until this month. So I'm uh, pretty happy to be, yeah, looking after things uh, at this end for the for the time being. Uh, so welcome everyone. Um, Eleanor, I'll pass to you. Uh, kia ora everyone. I'm Eleanor, uh, aerotown based writer director. And I did not have to go very far today. I think I just jumped off a tractor and then into the into my office. Um, Kerry Ann. Yes. Um. Hi. <clears throat> I'm Kerry Ann. Um. <clears throat> sorry. I uh, currently live just outside of Dunedin. Um. Uh, I'm. I've been studying for the last three years from home, and uh, we live on a farm. So that's yeah. That's where I'm at. Right, uh, Penny. <laughs> Hi everyone, yeah, Penny Hunt, a writer director. I live in Port Chalmers. Um, the only difficulty in coming to the meeting tonight was turning off my headphones because I'm listening to an awesome podcast at the moment called Witch, um, which is by the BBC, which is all about witches, which is really appropriate for Halloween coming up, but it's a um, very cool podcast, so highly recommend. Sue. So... Hi, can you hear me? Good, good, at last, yeah. I, <laughs> the closer I am to the modem, the better this, easier this gets. Hi, I'm Sue uh, Marshall. I'm based in Dunedin at the moment and um, producer and writer and all round dog sporty, I suppose. Yeah. Right, thanks. Okay, Erin. Hi, um, I'm Erin. I am Wanaka based, currently Glenorchy based. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. I'm a, an aspiring producer working towards it. Um, currently production coordinator on a reality TV show, which is insane. Um, and so my only difficulty was just trying to run away from the office to be allowed to come and join you guys. So um, yeah, thanks, Maddie. Great. Glad to have you here. Um, Fiona. Hi, I'm Fiona Smythe. I live in Dunedin. I moved down from Auckland last year. Um, I've been out of the industry for a while. Just coming back into it, I've done um, produced some um, short films, done a lot of production managing and a lot of um, script consulting. So, yeah, just kind of finding out where I want to place my skill set at the moment. Great. Thanks for joining us, Fiona. It's great. And I'm um, no, Sergey. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sergey. I'm based in Dunedin. Um, aspiring writer, director, producer. Great. Thanks. All right. Welcome, everybody. And I'd like to especially welcome Emma uh, to our meeting tonight. Emma, as well as being the um, Fresh Shorts manager for Script to Screen and the Film Commission, um, is also herself a producer. Um, with a lot of experience in short films, um, series pilot as well as where I met Emma. And um, yeah, it's really good to have, um, to know that Emma's sort of, is our contact point for Fresh Shorts because uh, yeah, she she know, knows the industry really well. So welcome, Emma. Thanks, Maddie. So cool um, to be here speaking with you all this evening. I The only difficulty I had was peeling the four-year-old off me. I think he has yet another bout of croup coming on, so yay. Um, yeah, but really awesome, and thank you for taking the time out on your Monday evening to be here and listen, listen to me prattling on. So um, yeah, as Maddie said, I'm the Fresh Shorts Program Manager. This is my third year in the job and I love it. I love short films. I've produced probably far too many of them in my lifetime. A few Fresh Shorts, uh, a Sunday story, some self-funded through Boosted and more recently a pilot for the episode one 
program, which was filmed down in Ormadama with uh, Maddie as production manager and Erin as coordinator. So yes, that was earlier this year in Feb, I think. So awesome to be back and have those familiar faces here tonight as well. Um, yeah, I just also wanted to say that it's actually such a privilege to connect with you all down there in the deep south. I know sometimes up here in Auckland, we can feel like a bit of an island and um, just wanted to reiterate that we really love seeing films and projects and teams from the regions and getting to know you through your fresh short submissions is really awesome. So uh, yeah, go for go for gold and and don't be afraid to get in touch with me. You know, phone call, email, that's what I'm there for. So yeah. But cool, hopefully we can touch on some things tonight that you have burning away. Great. Thanks, Emma. It sounds sounds good. Okay, so we've got um, a few pre-submitted questions, and I'm sure other questions will come up. And if you think of something, you can either pop it in the chat or um, at the end of, once we've got through the first lot of questions, um, just put your hand up or just start talking. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, put your hand up, whichever, whether it's virtual or uh, or an actual hand, uh, that would be great. Uh, so what we what we want to be asking Emma is the questions um, about what's uh, that is outside of what's covered in the resources. Um, there's um, the guidelines. Uh, there's the Fresh Shorts webinar that Emma and Jude were on last week. Um, which is um, available on YouTube, so um, and through the through the script to screen um, website. So definitely, those are available to check in more detail on the, the nitty gritty of um, doing an application, and then of course the link to the portal. Uh, I think Emma's really hoping everyone's uh, either has everyone who's submitting to Fresh Shorts either has already got on the portal um, and checked it out and made a bit of a start. Or, or it's really good to get on as soon as you can, um, because sometimes there are glitches, sometimes there'll be a lot of people on at the very last minute. Uh, I think closes, is it, is it 1 p.m. next Monday? Is that the closing? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so you've got not just through the weekend, but you've got half a day on Monday if you really need it. <laughs> uh, There's so always something. There, yes, that we can, yeah. can do, do a little bit more, a little bit better, or polish polish up, and that's what we're about today. So we've got about 45 minutes with Emma. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I thought what I'd do anyway, first of all, is just a quick recap of I know Jude and I went into a lot of detail stepping through the portal on the webinar but just a quick a quick recap of the like top top tips from from that just to burn them sear them into your brains in this final week if that's cool to start there Maddie yep that'd be perfect yeah, right. okay I'm just going to read from my list so I don't forget anything and please just know that it's really awesome to actually be speaking to humans rather than into the void <laughs> so thank you thank you all for being here on the grid <laughs> okay so um at stage one I know the the submission is is brief but succinct and the script is really the essential document. It's the most important thing. And within the pointers, there's a narrative checklist. Just make sure you're referring to that as you check over your script in this final week It's um, and, and you're hitting the marks. This is what the, the assessors will be looking at when they're also reading your scripts at the other end and kind of ticking those things off in their minds. So it's a really great blueprint and a guideline uh, for, for you to follow. And I think, yeah, it's there's so much gold in that pointers document and also in the portal, you know, hovering over the question marks and just checking in. Jude's done these sort of big, long paragraphs of things to kind of follow. So um, really, really like lean into that. It's, um, it's a great space to be practicing submissions, uh, fresh shorts. So, yeah. And then following on from the script, make sure you leave enough time for the log line. I utilize the pointers and, and formulas in the, in the uh, application pointers document again and um, make sure that it's a really small, succinct, powerful summary of your film. I've done an exercise in the past with my teams where we write a director, producer, kind of go away and come up with some ideas together and bring them back and, and bash it around. And often we find 
find a place that feels really good for everyone and kind of also ensures that we're all making the same film, which is also really important. Um, and, and you can kind of reflect that back in, on your script and go, okay, do the, is the script doing what it needs to do versus the logline telling the story that I think the script is telling itself. So yeah. And then from there, the video. Okay, so this, this is, I know, a little daunting um I've done a few of them myself and you never really know how rehearsed to be versus off the cuff and definitely like I know it's kind of impossible but as relaxed as you can is good just this is where the assessors want to get to know the humans behind the projects especially if they haven't come in to contact with you before you know your new fresh emerging faces and it's really nice to have that connection and it's something that they um, often refer to when we're back in, even in the uh, panel room, sort of whittling down the shortlist, just kind of checking in the rapport of the team. And, and that's where you have the, an opportunity to articulate, you know, the heart of the story and why you want to tell it. Um, yeah, so I think just be as honest as you can, imperfect and present. Um, it's, not, it's not a retelling of the script, but really just hitting on, hitting on, you know, why, why this story and why you. Yeah, uh, it's okay to have a few bullet points though, right? On your phone to hit as you go through, but just not a script in front of your screen. Okay, and finally the images. So again, this is something that comes up in the room. Uh, they'll bring them up when talking about the script uh, and, and it really flavors it for them. It tells them your director's voice, your sensibility and uh, gives gives a kind of cohesive cinematic and unified voice of you as a director so as long as you can capture a feeling mood tone and an atmosphere that you're hoping to evoke in your in your film that's really um, that's really all you need to do so uh, there are some really cool screen grab websites out there if you don't have them on file just drop me a line or drop me a line and I can um, send some suggestions through they're really awesome and there's like a full library of grabs from different films out there so yeah okay okay I think that's all my blah blah before we can get into the questions but if you have any anything even to ask on on what I've just been through just um fire it through as well in the chat yeah I actually think I'm just gonna go I'll, I'll, that that really it was really helpful I'll go off and carry on with my application if that's okay <laughs> Well, it's just a, a quick brief hot spots, but yeah. Yep, okay. There might be more to come. Okay. Yeah. So um first first couple of questions. I think I'd like to kind of put them together for you. Um they kind of go together. What can make a southern project stand out? And what Otago and Southland ideas have you seen too much of? Good questions. And this could be the same could be said for any film project, honestly. So um and and it all comes back to voice and there may be many iterations of the type of story you are telling out in the world such as a coming of age I've produced many coming of age films but it's your particular spin on that story and your and what you bring to that with your voice as a director that sets it apart so again back to the video and the and the why you're telling the story and why now what is your connection to the material and how distinctive can you be in your telling of it and the character's journey within it. So I think um, I think that there are there, there's nothing that we've seen too much of. I think it's just you need to find a way to tell the story with your own voice in a way that will, will make it distinctive and carry it to the top. And, and often that comes down to being as authentic and connected to the material as you can be and really knowing why you want to tell that story and whose story it is and giving us a, a really strong character to follow and, and dropping us into that story as soon as you can so that we hook along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Sort of no, I, yeah, that's uh that's that's really helpful there. Um so if if it may be true that southern teams um, may not have had as much producing and directing experience as teams from Wellington or Auckland. So how can we compensate for that fact with other elements of the application? Okay, so Never fear, Fresh Shorts is for new filmmakers. It's for fresh voices. And we know when you're coming in that there are different levels of experience and you may not even have made anything before. 
um, I, I'd say as a new director, lean into those visual references as a way to demonstrate your voice. And, and through the application, the video is also a really great opportunity to kind of um, examine that as a team. So uh, acknowledging the challenges that you might face, um, where you might need support. If you think that it would be a great idea to bring an EP on board, you might even put some names in there, e even though you have, haven't reached out to them yet. It's great to kind of go, I'd love a directing mentor, I think, or I'd love to hop on another short film or music video and, and kind of get an experience on set in that space. So uh, I think um, and I'd noticed that Script to screen actually and in, in other in other um, industry organizations have been running a lot more workshops down south. And I, if you have seen any of those coming up over the next six months, I'd highly recommend traveling to them. It's just a really great way to connect with other um, other community, other people in your community, networking, and also getting your face in front of the organizations and funders and more experienced filmmakers. You don't you don't know what opportunities will come from that. You know, that's kind of why I'm here because I put myself out there as, as much as it went against my own grain. Here I am sitting on webinars. <laughs> but it um yeah. So I think you can't under underestimate and undervalue the kind of the, the what yeah what it means to just connect and and I know you can really feel like an island but do do make sure that um, when those opportunities come up you put yourselves out there that was kind of a tangent but yes um, in the video <laughs> do acknowledge it and that's cool like it don't doesn't matter if you don't have experience you honestly go for it and and we acknowledge that that you do have to work harder down there and it's not as easy to go for a coffee with someone down the road so um yeah absolutely was it is there anything i missed in there maddie no i think that's that no that's good that's good and i think this is a little bit um relates to the next question a bit as well and perhaps you could extend further um are there ways that we can re reinforce our application by reaching out to community partners so that's like film officers and also mentors which you've talked about a little bit um as far as yeah that side of things goes yeah cool so when I've had um projects coming up or in the pipelines often reach out to the film offices like um Film Otago Southland and Dunedin I've had lot, many conversations with Carly and and Stefan um around SOAR and other projects we'd hope to travel down there with and it's always a really great idea to connect with them and let them know that you have um, work kind of in development. Sometimes I might wait until I have um, kind of evolved it a little bit more and have a few more people on the team or maybe have in in intentions or ambitions to crowdfund. So I have an idea of the timeline, but it's always really great to just get in touch with them and let them know what you're doing. Um, you never know what areas they might be able to support you in or with. Um, yeah, like there's lots of training opportunities and you, yeah, you never know what end of the budget it is. So just definitely reach out and, and see, see how they can help. And they might even be able to connect you with other, with other makers and crew, et cetera. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Emma. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, indie filming in Otago and Southland is often more expensive than filming in the cities. Uh, you all have discovered this filming um, in a yeah. lovely, lovely big city of Amarama. Um, so having to fly, drive crew members in and house them. Uh, how have you seen previous Southern projects handle these kind of budgeting challenges? Yes, always a few surprises with an away shoot. Resource consent in Ormadama was one of those. So make sure that you do your research um, and and have a little bit up your sleeve if that is, uh, that was a big surprise actually. But yes, if that is something that you need to contend with or work or work with. Uh, I think, so Thor was a crew of maybe 22 and we had, I can't remember, Maddie, Erin, was it around 10? Oh, we had four key cast members that we had to travel and one was a our lead was a mother so we had to travel her family down with her baby and the three-year-old and husband and kind of accommodate them and look after them um and the baby was feeding at the time so there were just all sorts of considerations that um chewed up the budget and we had to kind of 
make allowances for it. And I I agree that definitely filming in the South Island was more expensive and and much more of a wrangle, even bringing crew across from Christchurch to Amadama, um, traveling some down from Auckland at the last minute. Um, uh, so I can, yeah, absolutely empathize with you there. Uh, what we had to do actually was um, in, invest ourselves to to uh, get the budget up to where we needed it to be to, to make it happen. And crew uh, can be, depending on what's happening, uh, a bit more expensive or harder to rouse from their beds to come to an away shoot. So I think that... Um, if I was to go there again, I would look at the script and the project and go, okay, where, what are the areas I can economize in? And it might be that if you are doing an away shoot away from the centers that you just have to look at um, what the scope and scale of your story is, how many locations there are, how many cast members you have to travel and transport, even, even key crew members, if you have a producer, director, kind of in different, in different locations that you have to move back and forward, um, just, just yeah. Don't you? You want to have as few surprises as possible, um, and connecting with the community where you're filming in really early. I think we went down to Omaruma maybe, I don't know, twelve months before we, <laughs> before we were filming, and went back about five times from Auckland, maybe even six before we shot, just to reconnect with the location and and the community and and um, Maddie and Erin as well. So. Um, having having production crew on the ground where you are filming is also really amazing and pulling in extras from that area um, yeah but definitely I think um, budgeting uh, and, and and looking at but to boost it and other kinds of ways to to raise funds is really a great idea just just to cover off those things that you can't plan for you know like I, we didn't plan to have a lead actress with a with a family in tow, but she was amazing and she was the perfect fit and she made so many um, con concessions and allowances to let her family come with her as well. So it was pretty amazing, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's Have I missed it. anything? Maddie, Erin, anything else? Uh, well, I think you're right. There was all those little unexpected things, the transporting of breast milk back to dad and the baby and the um, and the crew, ensuring that the crew was on board with the fact that she had to take regular breaks. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, and you never know what you might find in the building or me in as well. So, right. um, yes. yeah, but no, I think it's, I guess what I learned from being involved in that shoot was... Um, just the value of real preparation and the value of just being prepared to, say, to you know, think, okay, how do we make this work? Um, uh, yeah, having to, uh, and the things you don't expect, like the um, the, sh the last shoot of, of the day basically taking place from the crew room where I'm trying to cook dinner because our... our um, <laughs> our catering had fallen over <laughs> so yeah those things that you just get on and you do it trying to <laughs> yeah trying to um do things in between takes <laughs> yeah, yeah so that's that's i was just gonna say that maddie also like in those small towns dealing with suppliers and caterers and things like that who aren't used to kind of the film industry and how it works and it being a, a mammoth thing for them when we're like oh this is just this is just normal and if we were in Auckland that wouldn't have even been a question um which added some extra fun times didn't it <laughs> yes yeah, yeah all those things to navigate feel, feel mm. free to call me <laughs> any, at any point anyone when you're embarking on your low budget shoot in in a small town <laughs> what to do what not to do yeah so um Okay, that's probably an, enough of the Thor experience. Thor, yes, for now. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next question I've got um, is about besides boosted and crowdfunding campaigns, because it is often necessary to pull in some extra dollars, um, where have Southern filmmakers or, in your experience, um, any filmmakers really found extra funding for their projects? 
and how can you um where can you pull funds from <laughs> I mean, what, yes, so once you've perhaps run your boosted campaign and somebody actually today sent me the name of a really awesome mentor, boosted mentor who's based in Dunedin. I don't, I, I have her details here, actually. I'll see if I can put them in the chat. Um, they they said that they spoke with her recently and she was amazing. And not only did she give them ideas on, how, you know, to help them, to understand how boosted works and kind of demystify the terror around that. I've run two boosted campaigns, so I know how terrifying that seems at the outset. Um, but she also gave them some suggestions on where they might find additional funds and how they might re uh, reach out to um, donors in, in other ways. So I will, Maddie, I might have to, for some reason I can't find that email, but I will send her details to you so you can send them out. Um, but you know, like even looking at local suppliers for coffee and and people that might be able to support you through location equipment or um, or uh, getting a getting a caterer on board or there's there are lots of um, ways that you can get some in kind support. But also, um, it's, it is a really great idea to again have a chat with the film officers. They might have some suggestions or ways they can support you through trainee positions or. Yeah, you just never know. You never know what's left in the coffers. Is that right? Would that be fair to say, Maddie? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's definitely, yeah. Um, get put, putting those in-kind things in place first rather than um, waiting until you realise you're going to be struggling um, to actually yeah. have, have, the, have the budget left at the end, getting as much in-kind support, especially at this level of filmmaking, uh, and yeah, find those um, supporters that want to come on board early on. Uh, and again, that's preparation, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm thinking about yeah. that. Okay, um, so in the guidelines, it says um, at stage one, you're required to have a writer, director, producer, and a written script. Um, however, um, we've had past feedback questions um, asked about who else is on the team, wider collaborations, do you have actors in mind yet? Uh, would it be an advantage, given this is early development stage, to have locked in other team members? At this stage, it's absolutely plans and intentions. So if you've, for example, seen the New Zealand's Best or some Show Me Shorts films where you've really liked the sensibility of a DOP or a couple of DOPs, I would make mention of them in your submission, just so that the assessors know you're thinking about it. Even if you say, I'd like to have a chat with this person, I'd like to approach this person when the script's a little, had a few more passes. Uh, I think that their sensibility would be a good fit because I saw this film that resonated with me. Um, I think it's just also great to have an understanding of the landscape of who's working out there and whose work you like. So it's always good, always good to acknowledge them, even if you don't have them in place or haven't even had the conversations yet. That's totally fine. But as well, the same with, um, you know, it can, it can be a really good idea to mention production designers or design or costume designers whose work you've also thought looked really great in a short film that, um, that has been shot down south that you might have access to. Uh, even if they're in there as a mentor or, you know, just, just thinking, not, just to have the assessors know that you're thinking about these things and have considered them, as well as, um, you know, of course you won't have cast yet, but it is it is great to think, I okay, had like, like um, Thor, like, oh, we were like, oh, we would like to have someone like Claire Waltron in, in the finished piece, and then she happened to be our nurse in, in there at the end. But it's, um, yeah, it's really a good idea to just be thinking about these things so that they know that they're on your mind and that you're kind of engaged with the landscape as well that's out there. Right, that's really helpful, yeah. That's Plans great. and intentions. Plans and intentions. Plans and intentions. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. You don't have to be fully crude at this stage, just to, just to, you know, have those thoughts Thank ticking you. away. Yeah. Cool. All right, so has anybody else got any questions um, for Emma at this point? Anyone just checking back up and down through the pictures? Erin's had an ear in hand. Oh, Erin's put a hand Hi. up. Yeah. Right. 
Well, I, I guess just jumping back on one of the questions from earlier around, um, are there some stories that um, you, you know, everyone's, that the panel are maybe tired of or or the reverse of that, that just get really excited when they do come through. Um, obviously the voice and people being passionate about the story that they're telling um, kind of overrides what the story is. But yeah, just wondering if there's some that you are kind of like, nah, don't bother, sort of. I think like I referred to coming of age story and I've made many of them myself. If, if you have, Okay, so the one of the coming of age stories I produced was called The Calf with um, Matthew Sunderland and Simon London co-directing. And uh, and so that was a story from per Matt's um, personal experience. It came from, actually it was a mesh of two stories of him kind of running, deciding to run away to Paris with his friends on their bikes, um, driving through the country, riding through the countryside for a day before they were picked up somewhere at the end of it, I can't remember where, and his mother dying from cancer when he was a, a young boy. And so we pulled those two was, stories together and it, we had a young boy running away from his mother's death. But there were moments of like real magical realism with the young boy lying beside a calf who was dying and then seeing a bull in a forecourt at the end of the story and kind of finding a way with the cinematic language to make that punch punch above. So. We've all seen stories like this before of grief and loss of innocence, but if you can find a way to tell that story in a way that is different from the ones that you've seen before in a way that is in your voice as a director, that is ab absolutely like find your voice and find some visual references that show your voice and show that this is a film they haven't seen before. And with that script, you know, don't spend too much time with preamble, like really just, we don't have time to bathe in it in a short film, like really drop the audience into that first scene so they can get their bearings. They know whose story this is. They know the world they're in and what journey they're on and they're along for the ride with that character. And don't let go of them until you get to the end. And just make sure that you have that central driving question present like in every scene. So every, every scene is turning on that question, pushing the story forward so that when they land at the end, that's where you want them to land. You've driven them to that point and they're landing in a place which is exactly where you want them and you're answering that question that's been carrying them through for the whole story. So if you can give them a really satisfying story that actually makes them feel something, that's what all these readers want. They want to feel something from, from the work that you're submitting. Then you've done your job. Yep. Was that helpful? okay <laughs> yeah no it's hard to know or we'll say it's hard to articulate what's what makes you stand out but it is it is voice and it is just a really you know clear singular journey that pulls the reader and it doesn't let go of them till the end yeah okay any other questions I just um maybe wanting a little bit of clarity over um images. So you mentioned mm. screen grab from um various sites. Um what when when you're looking at the images chosen uh, or when the uh, assessors are, what is it they what is it they're looking for for um in the images and um how do we utilize the five to to really bring that together? Okay, cool. So good question, Maddie. So they shouldn't be a retelling of the story. They can give a sense of the story, but what you really want to do again is to evoke a feeling for the readers so that they can take those images and feel like they have colored the world of the script for them. They can see the film in their mind's eye from those five images that you've provided, which I know is a big ask, but if you, if you can give them a cohesive unified selection of images that have a that have a kind of um, unity in terms of tone, mood, atmosphere. Like you can see that there's a thread of connection between the treatment of light and color palette and um, and sensitivity. Then um, 
then you're on track and honestly just make sure that you give them variation so go from wide to close um make sure that you have different framing of character and um and they're not all looking at five mid shots for example you can have an establishing shot in there and an extreme close-up or however you see your film that gives a sense of what you want them to feel when they're reading it or watching it, then that's that's exactly it. I think um, maybe maybe Maddie, I can share. Oh, yeah, I can share something. Showing. Share, can share. Um, film grab. Film AI. Flim no film AI. <laughs> um, critical past. Are those any of the ones that you were thinking of? Yeah, those are great. And, and it is um, Shot Deck. I think you can sign up for a two-week trial free and then it costs. But if yeah. you sign up for a two-week trial, then you can kind of, you know, pillage their stock for at least for the purposes of the application and then put it on pause. <laughs> um, I can't, I have we, oh, image reference. I'm just going to send you, Maddie, if you want to bring it up, the um the image references that we used in the webinar that were that were these were just uh, these were just pulled together by Vero last year she was the comms manager at script to screen and they're not you know they're they're good images and they just show you that um how evocative they can be in terms of creating a feeling and a mood so they're not for any kind of film or anything. They were just to give, give an idea of the kind of going from wide to close. To is, that how, meant, how... is that meant to be flim.ai or is it meant to be film.ai? It's flim, oddly enough. Mm, it okay. is flim? Yeah. Just checking. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get back into the Zoom to share. I think I'm... Oops, can I have screen sharing or um, Eleanor? Yeah, it should be enabled now, Maddie. Yep, great. And make sure that they're landscape full page, one image per page. Let's see what you mean about the variation in um, shot types. Yeah, so not all faces or all landscapes say wide, close, but there's a there's a unity there in terms of color palette or treatment. Um, and as with the last image, you're left feeling something at the end. So mm. yeah, I mm. think they're a really powerful tool, and they are something that. Um, comes up in the in the room with the panel um often so I yeah I would just encourage you to if you have time to take some time doing some real digging and thinking about what references you have and comparables you have for your short film even in your director summary it's great to include a, a few of those if you have the space in terms of you know a particular reference to lighting or um framing or um, color palette that is can evoke something for the readers. Oh, it's great. Ooh. Okay. So, any last questions? Oh, not Patrick on as well. That's cool. Any other questions for Emma? What, what are you working on at the moment, Emma? Got ah, well, Thor, Thor is in development, so Ooh. with Sky and NZ on air, so I'm working on that, yeah, Yay. yeah, and I have That's a awesome. um, Catalyst short as well, but we're probably not shooting that till next year, so that's, yeah, and a few, and a self-funded short as well, and then 
I should probably pause on the shorts. <laughs> yes, uh, my tally's getting up there. So I just wanted to reiterate everyone that I have been exactly where you are in Fresh Shorts land. I have submitted and I've resubmitted and I've got funding. I've been turned down. So uh, please honestly reach out with any questions. I'm here really pretty flexible this week so give me a bow drop me a line really happy to have a convo with anyone yeah so that's brilliant that um yeah emma is available uh yeah get an email to her and to get in this week uh you, she doesn't probably want to be um chatting with you about anything on monday morning because that's probably going to be <laughs> Maybe not. too much about you know. Yeah, usually a few technical issues or last minute requests yeah <laughs> but any time for the rest of this week honestly don't don't be shy questions big or small I have no doubt asked them myself before so there are no stupid questions I promise yeah great okay thank you so much and thank you for yeah being with us tonight and I do hope that the group oh Sergey, do you want to say something or do you, oh, it's just a thumbs up. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I can't do that. I don't know why mine doesn't come up. Yeah. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> awesome. Uh, truly, such a pleasure to meet you all and see your faces. And uh, thank you, honestly, for jumping online for a chat tonight. It's, um, yeah, it's really nice to just have a chance to connect and kind of hopefully give a little bit of sage advice. Um, yeah, and wish you well. Wish you all all the very best for your submissions. Look forward to seeing your names pop up in the portal. Yay. Cool. And Maddie Thanks. and Aaron, lovely to see you both again. Good to see you. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Emma. All right. Thank we'll be going on a little bit more meeting. <laughs> um, I thought it might be good just to have a, a general catch up. Now, the um, steering group, um, that's what we call ourselves, we haven't really got, we don't know whether a committee or a council or a core group, but um, the steering group, um, which who currently um, is uh, Sue, Penny, Eleanor, Erin, myself, and Stefan usually can be at our meetings, but not at the same time as Penny. Um, and uh, Reese has been working on the website, um, so he's not here tonight. Uh, and there will be like once we put we, we'll put the call out but anybody else that wants to stick around uh and uh be part of the the meeting we'll have after this meeting people are most welcome to stay because it's completely open and we're really in the in the early stages of pulling things together so what has been happening behind the scenes uh things always take longer than you hope they will but uh so if, i think most of you will be aware film otago southland are funding uh funding the coordinator which has come myself and uh and funding the initial setup stuff over the first year so the the legal costs the um all the admin things that we're going to need and they're going to be um hand in hand with us really in getting the first of the the workshops um being part of the expo that we're planning for early may and also uh doing some meet and greets around the around the region so uh the main ones would be Dunedin, Queenstown and Invercargill uh so we're really looking forward to uh to organizing more stuff and getting some networking and some all these things things happening um we are getting the website um sorted we're hoping to be able to launch I think the ideal will will have be ready to launch before the next Film Otago Southland meeting, which is at the end of November, so it's about three or four weeks away, to launch the website to um, to personalise our Facebook page and look at what else um, we're going to need for that uh, and in our social media and getting a, news, a regular newsletter in place. Um, the, the big news really is that we've been working on the expo and i think it would be it'll be really good we'll um we'll jump on board the draft that we've got the ideas we have for um running our expo which will be a two-day event at chago university in early may next year 
So we're starting to pull it together. Uh, so what I should probably do now, shall we jump into a, a core group meeting? And if people want to stay, uh, actually before that, does anybody have anything they want to share, whether it's about projects or about um, any of the workshops they've been to? So we'll probably, yeah, just take a moment before we jump into the, the business end of it. Um, if anybody's got some, uh, yeah, some shares that they want to. Yes, Eleanor. I have a cheerful share. Uh, the Jacks, so if anybody knows Jack Smiley and Jack Trounce, you will if you don't know them. Uh, they're high schoolers, they're year 12s, but they did a behind the scenes featurette for our short film. Uh, and I am allowed to announce this. They won Best Documentary at the New Zealand Broadcasting School School Shorts Award for that oh, cool. last night. So they are pumped. And we are very, 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 very chuffed for them because they got the whole nine yards, you know, That's award ceremony, the whole thing. Very exciting. That's great news, it's, isn't it? It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Was it Jacks? <laughs> Jacks, yes. Yes. It's like it's like uh it's like everything everywhere all at once. Who are those folks? They they call them, you know, they're a pair. They work together always. Excellent. Yeah. That's really cool to hear, you know, the young ones coming up, obviously doing a great job on what they're doing. Um and they're they're high school age still, are they? Did you say? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, no, that's very cool. 